This is The Meaningful Way. I'm your host, Luke Iorio. Today, let's talk about one of the scariest, most uncomfortable topics on the planet. That's right, we're going to talk about emotions. You know, it's really amazing because on the one hand, emotions are what we live for. They are what deeply enrich the experience of life. And when you look behind so many of our goals, what you realize is that we're really after that feeling that those goals and the journey provides. I know for myself, I have a certain feeling of life that I like finding ways of tuning into because when I'm in that space, everything's richer. It's more connected. It's more meaningful. And then there are those other times. There are those things that we just struggle with, those things from what's going on for us in the moment or things from our past that we've never really truly moved past, we've never really truly healed from. And there's something about this range of emotions, especially those truly challenging ones that seem so difficult to address, to talk about, so that we can face our emotional well-being front on. Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to address, and we're going to address it fearlessly. I'm honored to have as our guest, Leah Guy. She's an intuitive transpersonal healer, a spiritual teacher, professional speaker, and media personality. She offers wisdom from a lifetime of personal triumphs and more than 22 years of helping clients transform their lives from fear and disconnection to heart-centered, soulful living. She's a sought-after, inspirational speaker who's appeared on numerous television and radio shows on topics such as meditation, the mind-body connection, energy medicine, intuition, and addiction, as well as emotional and spiritual healing. She owns the Modern Sage Healing Center and Product Line and a a Girl Named Guy Productions, and she is the author of The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace, which will serve as much of our focus today. And with that, Leah, thank you so much for joining us here on The Meaningful Way. Thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you. So maybe the first place to begin is to just give us a little bit of an overview of when we talk about emotional healing, what do you really mean by emotional healing? And maybe how do we differentiate that from uh, things like mental health as we might think about it? Yeah, that's a great question and um, an important one because even with emotions such as um, fear, (laughs) anger, um, joy. You know, we we translate a lot of these emotions in our mind and we start to treat the mind as if it were our emotional body. But in fact, they are different things, but they communicate constantly. So um, although I'm thrilled that mental health is getting a lot more attention as it, as it should, um, emotional health isn't quite getting the attention that I think it deserves, meaning that we're not really taught or encouraged to process and to be with our emotional health and well-being and our emotional state. Um, in fact, it's always got kind of gotten a bad rap of, you know, you're too emotional or don't be so emotional or, you know, just uh, don't worry about that. You know, things will change and trying to dismiss the way people feel as if it makes uh, as if emotions make a person weak. So my interest is really in trying to bring to the forefront um, emotional health, which doesn't mean always being happy. Emotional health means recognizing and being with the difficult emotions, the, um, the wonderful emotions, and the neutral emotions, and recognizing the difference and allowing them to process and transform so that we can have the next emotion that's coming so we don't get stuck. Hmm. So you, you titled your book and you refer to this as Traveling the Fearless Path. So yeah. what, what is the, the fearless path? How does that equate to facing our, our emotions and our emotional well-being? Well, it certainly doesn't mean that we're never going to have fear. <laughs> it doesn't mean that we're going to be like a daredevil. You, to don't, our, you don't have that secret pill, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> um, you know, I'm an emotional creature, and we all are. Um, what what it means to be fearless is simply to have the courage to show up to your life, you know. Mm. And uh, if you're experiencing grief, having the courage to sit with the grief and feel the grief and trust yourself, you know. And that's uh, where a lot of us can't really tap into because, again, we haven't been taught or built confidence of how to trust ourselves to deal with some of these difficult emotions. So being Mm -hmm. fearless is really just being courageous to be present Mm -hmm. and to allow what is to be. So let's let's give everybody a little bit of of background in terms of 
how you arrived at pursuing this fearless path. And I think, you know, certainly you, you point to, to the grief and fear and, and all sorts of things uh, that you've had to learn and grow through uh, despite yeah. some extraordinary uh, adversity. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit about uh, that time of what it is that you went through and obviously what, what really ensued afterwards. Sure. Well, for me, it was a period of about 10 years between the age of um, 11 and 21 mm -hmm. uh, that most of my traumas happened. And it started with probably my parents divorcing and me being a very sensitive child. Um, you know, and I handled it relatively well, like most children do, but mm -hmm. it was the beginning of recognizing grief, you know, and separation and fear and pain and anxiety. And then um, not long after, I had an aunt that was murdered. And then not long after that, I uh, developed an eating disorder, bulimia. Mm -hmm. And then I started experiencing extreme anxiety. And then I was raped when I was 21. Mm -hmm. And so, through the course of those years, which were formative years and, you know, developmental years, um, it was a very trying time at the, at, at the time in particular, you know, like when most people are going through traumas, we can't step back and recognize, oh, this is a trying time. You know, yeah. you're just kind of trying to get through it. Um, but I did recognize that I that things were not um, balanced, things were not right in me. And I, and I went the route of, you know, some of the traditional therapies mm -hmm. and so forth. And and medicines and, and everything. And in my early twenties, it just wasn't, uh, it wasn't helping. I was, I was seeking for relief, any kind of relief. Yeah. And like many people, I tried alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, sex, shopping, you know, mm -hmm. ignoring the problem and so forth. And I couldn't find the relief. And, um, luckily I came across, uh, a training program, a school that I ended up going to after college, and it was about energy healing and meditation and mindfulness mm. and mind-body connection. Mm. And it was that that allowed me to start even dipping my toe into the possibility of regaining a sense of health. Now, mind you, through all of this, I was the homecoming queen, the student council president, you know, popular mm. at school, thriving, playing piano, doing sports, everything. Um, so I feel grateful that I had a, 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 um, a foundation mm -hmm. and I've always had kind of a spiritual bent, you know, a spiritual inclination and a great interest in health. So maybe it was those two things that led me, you know, onto my journey mm -hmm. of seeking a little bit something different. But what I talk about in the book is that not everyone goes through things like what I went through. Some people right. go through worse, you know, right. and some people go through milder, but more consistent kind of issues. And those are what I call PTED, post-traumatic emotional <laughs> disorder. Um, it's different than PTSD in that they're not these, you know, um, huge shocking events. They are normal life, uh, small catastrophes that affect us deeply mm -hmm. and we don't know how to deal with them. And so th that's who I wrote the book for, yeah. you know, for people that are, uh, waking up one day and going, why do I feel anxious every day? Why am I not sleeping? Why is my hair falling out? Why can I not focus? Mm -hmm. Why do I feel a lump in my chest? You know, and starting to address some of the underlying issues of these symptoms. So, so what is it that that when these things, whether it is through something extreme or it is the kind of the additive effect of just the the uh, emotional turmoil of even just growing up that we we go through, mm -hmm. what is it that we're what is it that we're not processing? What is it that we're not connecting to that has this add up in this way? Well, I think it's, um, you know, I think we connect to it in the sense of the pain, but then what mm. happens, we're taught to ignore the pain or shove it down or um, dismiss it, try to let it go or detach from it. And that's where the problems start. Mm -hmm. um, for example, let's, let's say a child was bullied. Well, you know, we know that it doesn't feel good to be bullied and, uh, and maybe a lot of attention will go towards the bully himself and why is the person bullying and they'll reprimand him or, and so forth. But the child that was bullied is now dealing with um, embarrassment, shame, feeling um, inadequate, yeah. low self-worth, ugly, you know, it could be uh, so many different things. And, uh, you know, in, unless we're working with what, what is shame and what is self-confidence, where else have you recognized this in your life? What does it feel like in your body? Where is it living in your body? Mm -hmm. How can we breathe through that and sit with that and be supportive through that? Because that's real. And when you just tell a child, oh, you know, you're, that, that's not true or don't listen to that person, it, you know, it may help their mind in the moment. 
but those deep emotional impacts are still there mm-hmm. and then they and they linger you know they they linger into our adulthood um, especially or depending on the degree of the emotional trauma or the emotional information and so with this lack of um, processing recognition acceptance and validation mm. of the emotions then we tend to just dismiss them mm-hmm. and belittle them and unwillingly or unknowingly you know we just swallow them and then all of a sudden they start getting stored in our muscle memory and our fat tissues and our gut and our mind and and wreaks a lot of havoc. So actually, I wanted, that's one of the pieces I wanted to go into a little further because I know uh, the big part of the beginning of this this process, as it were, the you know the, the the way in which you begin to move through this in the book begins with this idea of presence. Mm-hmm. And I've always been fascinated by even just exploring some of this myself of when you are even, and I'm only taking one little piece here, of when you become present to what's even going on within your body and with within your physiology, mm-hmm. of how much connection there is to these different emotions emotional states and these different emotional histories that we carry with us. And I'm just curious if you could say more of what's, what's really going on. How does this, how do emotions root themselves in, yeah. in the way that they do to our literal physical being? Well, that's why in the book I, I talk about the energy system because it's a very subtle but also um, revealing way that we can look at, at our lives. I mean, mm-hmm. we all are energy. We have energy. And we emit energy and we absorb energy. I mean, that's all studied and proven and so forth. And so when anything affects us, it shifts our energy and it shifts our our mind and feeling about things. For example, if you're sitting in a room and you're and you're fine and you're content and you're happy and you know the temperature's just right, you have an experience. But then if the air conditioner goes off and then a scary person comes into the room and then all of a sudden you feel threatened and it triggers something and you're starting to sweat and you feel very uncomfortable, your whole body chemistry changes. Your um, hormones release. Your, you know, the fight or flight thing may happen with your adrenal glands and your mind goes into um, protection mode and fear mode. Mm-hmm. Your body you know, changes temperature. Everything happens. And then, and then if that were a... Um, if that were not a real threat, for example, there wasn't real danger and maybe the air conditioning comes back on in a few minutes and that scary person leaves and you return to normal, there's a relatively small change that happens lo- you know, ongoing that lasts in your system. But if that were to be a regular event mm-hmm. where it happened time and again, then, you're, then your mind starts alerting your mm-hmm. body signals where your stomach may clench in. Um, even your lower stomach, your intestines, we hold in our perineal area. We um, tense our shoulders. Our back of our neck may go up, and our our chin may raise. And you know we're on the, pretty much in a in a mm. position to attack. Mm. And when that happens, but then we don't attack, or there's nothing to attack, but we have that sensation regularly. We have an experience of feeling, and then it almost as if it imprints on our mm. energy system and on our emotional being. And so people do carry it differently, but we found over the years, and this is in the book, I talk about the symptoms, physical symptoms and emotional symptoms mm-hmm. that relate to each um, energy system or chakra. And it, you know, it sounds kind of woo-woo, but it's really not. It's mm-hmm. just kind of a, a different way to study the, the body and the being to see where imbalances start to get stored. And there's some common places, you know, and and that's what I I often say, even though our stories are different, our suffering's the same. And we can kind of break it down to these seven main ways that we suffer. And, um, you know, for example, for women, we we tend to hold a lot of energy in our sacral area and that solar and then the um, sacrum just beneath the belly button Mm -hmm. above the pelvis area, our lower belly. And this is what we call the feeling center. And it really roots into um, family ancestry, to intimacy, to caretaking, to passion, to um, um, how we're expressing our creativity to the world, productivity Mm -hmm. and procreation. And so when there's a lot of um, disconnection in our family history, when there's a lot of abuse either physically or emotionally or um, um, feelings of inability to be loved or feel that intimacy with another, whether it come from fear or self-worth or what have you, then we start to shut down in this area or create imbalances. And it can look physical like constipation, reproductive issues, um, cramps, 
uh, bloating, uh, widening of the hip area, weight gain. And it can look emotional where we feel creatively shut down, where we, um, you know, we either can't cry or we cry all the time. Um, uh, you know, we're, we don't want to have relate. We want to cut off relationships with people and with our family and so forth. And energetically, you know, it can block that area as well mm. where we, um, where we don't feel grounded, where we don't feel uh, comfortable in that way. And it affects all area of our areas of our life. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's important to me to work holistically. You know, we talk mm -hmm. about it a lot, but understanding truly what the spirit, the mind and the body are saying to each other, how they're communicating. And I, I look at the energy system as one of those ways mm -hmm. of how they're communicating. Well, it's, it's one of the things, cause I, I will admit that, that, uh, Quite a few years ago, I was one of the kind of the skeptics of, of this type of an area, and it was something that, you know, I, I did not pay much mind to. And then, of course, I had some experiences with it, and all of a sudden, my mind changed very dramatically in mm -hmm. terms of how much wisdom uh, is contained within our bodies and then wisdom within these different systems. And whether yeah. you want to believe all of the aspects or not, you know, for anybody listening, it almost doesn't matter because it's what you take away from it and what it connects you to, that's what matters. And it's yeah. whatever way you you get access to that information is really important. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about, you know, how we release some of these things in the emotional workouts. But just before we do, there was such a wonderful line that I wanted to, to expand on from your book. Um, you talk about fear of your feelings is a distraction from doing the work of the soul. It's a mm. beautiful, beautiful line. Fear of your feelings is a distraction from doing the work of your soul. And it seems that, and you alluded to some of this before, there is so much that we do to distract ourselves in today's world and everything from substances to social media are things that pull us away from truly feeling our feelings. And so I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit more of what is, what is it that we're really truly afraid of? Well, ultimately, I think we're afraid of death. And this, mm -hmm. this is where the, the ultimate question of connection comes into play, meaning who are you? And, uh, you know, that quote that you said is um, um, indicative of, of what I mean when mm -hmm. I say that we are, we get very attached to this physical experience here. And, and I know you've probably heard that mm -hmm. phrase, you know, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's more than that. It's, it's rec recognizing that our soul is alive in us. And, and I believe that the ultimate fear comes when we get disconnected from our soul. Our soul is never changing. It's constant. It's pure. It is, it is the light and we are imperfect and constantly changing, and we fear changing so much that we're changing away from our soul. We're, we fear death uh, because we don't know how to get back to our soul, but that's not really our business. You know, <laughs> We don't understand that part of life. Um, everyone has different speculations and, and so forth, but I can't tell you for sure what happens. But what I feel confident in is when I am aligned with my goodness, my soul, my heart, then I have less fear. When I yeah. trust in that higher, bigger part of myself, then my fear diminishes. And what happens is, is that people believe that if they um, attend to their feelings and this emotional body that they have, then they're going to keep just being riddled with pain and grief and suffering and so forth and be separated from life. But the truth is, is that we get separated from life and separated from our soul when we don't pay attention to our feelings and our experiences yeah. and being present with them, because it is that that gives us information. I call, in the book, I call the heart the bridge between heaven and earth or between mm. body and soul. And it's that the heart is the translator, if you will. You know, we, we have this higher knowledge, this intuition, this faith, this trust, and, you know, we all attain for enlightenment and so forth. But the truth is, is our feet are on the ground and we're, we need to translate the information from the earth and this, this experience we're having with our hands and this tactile real experiences, these tangible things and this emotional quality, we need to translate that to our soul and our soul needs to be translated down into our body. And it's that place that we come from that we can move forward and feel uh, alive, yeah. you know, and live our purpose. When we're addicted, when we're distracted, when we're ignoring, when we're detached, when we feel bad, when we, um, you know, just 
uh, uprooted, it's very hard for us to live our purpose. And, um, and I think that's what all of us, ultimately, we want to experience love and we want to feel connection. We want to feel connection to each other. We want to feel connection to our soul. We want to feel connection to what our purpose is here while we're here. Mm. I, uh, many things I would love to expand on there. The the mm-hmm. first thing was just, I'm glad that you listed out the the ways we ignore, that we detach, the anger, the frustration, other things are there. Because the other wonderful line that was that, that was in your book as well, is just talking about this idea that fear is the great emotional chameleon. Uh, mm. And I've talked about it before on this show, that fear wears many, many masks. It comes in many different varieties and it fools you in many different ways to try and keep you away from who you truly are. Yeah. And you've, you've alluded to that, which I really appreciate. So how do we then, let's move to this, this form of how is it that we begin to translate uh, this information that's coming in through our heart? How do we recognize what is the work of our soul? Well, that's where, um, when I start in the book, is becoming present and grounded is the first step. Um, it's hard to do anything if we don't feel like we have an anchor to work from. And that's true with most anything in life. So, to to be able to listen and to be able to be an open um, you know, a f- uh, in the flow of life, if you will, requires us to get grounded and, and in our body and present, um, because that is what we're working with, whether you like it or not, you know. <laughs> so, um, I recommend a lot of um, techniques to help a person get grounded, grounded, whether it's physical exercise, you know, nature connection, mm-hmm. breath work, um, you know, connection with other people, care tending things, so forth. There's a lot of really just simple core elements mm-hmm. that help us get, get connected. And then from that, that point, you know, uh, surely working with the heart energy, the grief and the, the latent fears, resentments, and, um, you know, those places where we want to disconnect, um, out of fear of the pain, we have to really attend to those things with compassion, with um, just acceptance and acknowledgement of, you know, another thing I say in the book is you may not like it, but you can allow it. And I don't yeah. mean to allow abuse, but allow the feeling, allow what is real. Mm-hmm. And this is the main way uh, that I think what differentiates my book from a lot of others, but also just that help us really get on the path of healing is to accept the reality of what is. Yeah. I mean, you know, none of us are immune to it. Right now I'm going through a huge relationship drama, you know. Mm-hmm. It's it affects me. It hurts. It makes me feel crazy. I feel terrified that I'm unlovable, that, you know, I'm never gonna be with someone that, you know, it goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And but that's if I if I just go oh that's their problem and I'm fine and everything you know it's going to work out and just keep moving on and go the other direction you know if yeah. I keep with these d- disconnection um, ideas and and denial yeah. then I don't get any closer to my truth mm-hmm. um, I certainly don't I'm not able to hear and listen intuitively uh, and prayer and meditation guidance. Uh, when I'm when I'm blocked off like that, any information that's coming in is just going right out the yeah. other ear, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it's one of the things that even, even uh, again, comes up on the show, something I've also gotten in touch with. Is it's always amazing that when you go back to access some of the feelings that have been blocked or things that you're struggling through right now, when you can allow them, when you can just let them through mm-hmm. to experience, it's amazing how much you begin to move through and process in a very, very different manner as opposed to, oh, just stuff it down, deal with it later, whatever. It lingers for years, decades, or, or yes. takes that much longer to work through whatever you're working through. Yeah. Uh, and I know some of what you also then then connect some of this to is this idea of emotional workouts. And I was hoping you could expand a little bit on that because I know you just referenced a, a handful of, of practices, mm-hmm. whether it be meditation, uh, walks in nature, physical movement, things like that. Your emotional workouts seem to be a way to not only get in touch with emotions, but also, uh, and, and, and emotional processing, but also to be able to figure out what's your formula, right? Not everything is meant for every person, but what is it that, right. that you're figuring out for you? Well, I think the main point about it is just like we know that exercise is good for our body, um, we need to also attend to exercise for our mind and our emotions. So that's why I name them emotional workouts. They should be done regularly, um, you know, m- maybe not on a schedule, but mm-hmm. just being mindful of attending to our emotional health, uh, just like we do our physical health. And so, 
you know, the, the practices are really, again, about connection and how you can, like you said, it's going to be different for everyone, but there's some really, and it's not all heavy lifting. You know, people think, oh, emotions, oh God, I got to go back and think about how I felt when I was five years old and this is going to be terrible. It's not all about that. You know, some of the exercises are fun and creative and hands-on and, you know, get out and dancing or whatever. It's, it's really about connection and freeing some of this blocked energy Mm because it all works together. Like Mm -hmm. we said, you know, if you just use your mind to try to tackle all of your emotions, it's not going to it's not going to get you very far. You have to use your body. You have to use engage your spirit. You have to get into that creativity and get in also use the mind, but you know, not let the mind just direct everything that you do and get into the feeling of what is. And that's what, you know, it, it sounds really silly. Even people have heard of grounding practices, I'm sure, a lot, but like putting your feet um on the cold dirt, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. It, and really connecting, even if it's just for two minutes and paying all of your attention down to the bottom of your feet and feeling that coolness and that earth, it can feel so restorative and, um, or taking a, a salt bath, you know, um, essential oils. There's a lot of really beautiful things. Fortunately, the emotional workouts don't hurt nearly like the physical workouts do. <laughs> They're much more pleasant. Um, so I enjoy them, but absolutely. You know, there's uh, there's good reason for them, and I hope people utilize some of them. Well, and it's it's one of the things that I will throw out there for for those that have not done this type of work before. When you think about these emotional workouts, emotional processing, everything else, and I mean this with the pun and all, it's not mm-hmm. what you think. Okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Try some of this stuff out. It's not what yeah. you think it is. It comes out very very different as as you're describing. It be very playful. It can be very fun to go through this. Yeah. Uh, one one of the other practices that I was I, I was hoping you could just say a few words about because I found it incredibly intriguing and helpful was your practice of uh, spiritual mapping. And I was curious mm. if you could explain a little bit about about what what that was and how that really helps us uncover and get clearer about what truly matters in our lives. Yeah. Well, spiritual mapping is a process. I use it a lot in workshops and and, um, and live events, but it is helpful. People can do it on their own. It's essentially working from the heart to the condition or uh, discomfort or situation that you're in now. And I give a couple examples in the book, but the, the purpose of it is to find the place where we've made a conscious or unconscious um, choice that took us away from our heart. Mm-hmm. In other words, um, where we've kind of laid victim, you know, and it's at this point where we um, decided at some level in our being that we need to experience our pain, victimness, or uh, shame, guilt, what have you, rather than continue on the path of our heart. And so I use an example in the book about, you know, being in a relationship that was lonely or unfulfilling or always feeling alone, you know, um, and I track back, you make, you make a chart and you track like a map, Mm -hmm. different stops along the destination. And what's true, it could be that you are, feel alone in the relationship. Your partner is emotionally unavailable. They don't have a lot of time to give to you because of work, commitments, whatever. Um, You feel lonely you feel unlovable. Um, but then, then maybe the track starts changing where you recognize, well, I do like time by myself. Mm -hmm. I need time by myself. I crave love and attention though. Mm -hmm. I feel conflicted about uh, how to get love and attention. I need and feeling lovable, even though I need time to myself. And it's at this point when we recognize instead of accepting that, uh, you know, my heart needs love and I am lovable. I need time to myself. Instead of accepting that and being okay with finding a situation that works for you, we choose a situation that almost amplifies yeah. our our <laughs> concerns or our fears, which mm-hmm. is maybe I'm not lovable. Maybe I, you know, I can't do a relationship. And then we choose that path. And the way to heal is to recognize where we made the choice, mm. as opposed to just falling into life, or I keep repeating the pattern, or you know I keep finding the same kind of person, but recognizing um, this is my issue. This is not the other person's issue. This is my issue, and at this point, I made a choice out of fear rather than mm. love in my heart. 
And so that's what mapping is really for. And you can use it for business choices, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, all, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But it's, I mean, I think the, the, what it really begins to unearth is it helps us begin to connect to what is the real need that I am trying to connect to? What is the real want of, of your heart or what's going on that you're really pining for uh, at that given moment, as opposed to the facade that we wear, the mask that we wear, the, the decisions that we make that, that lead us off this course, uh, course. And prevent us from really recognizing what's really going on here. Yeah. Uh, and I love that you bring it, of course, back to that idea of finding that that choice point of where was mm -hmm. it that you actually, whether you consciously did it or not, you made a choice and you now have the chance to make another one. Yeah. And that choice usually changes when it becomes about the other person. You know, yeah. the second it becomes about they did this or I got fired or, you know, or they something else outside of yourself. It's usually right around that place on the map where mm -hmm. you can go, oh, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. right. uh, this isn't about what they did. This is about what I've set up for right. myself. Right. So so as we, we do all of this work, the, the emotional workouts, the spiritual mapping, we continue through all of these different, different processes. What's really going on is we're getting clearer and clearer and revealing what is it that truly matters to, to our soul, to our heart. And one of the things that I love being able to ask our, ask our guests is just to get your perspective of where you are in life right now. And I guess maybe two questions. What is it that you know from where you are? What matters most to you at this point in your life and work? And what does it look like to, to be able to live that, to prioritize that so that you get to touch that stuff on a regular basis? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think for me, what's most important is that I continue um, my, relation, my relations with people and my work that help me grow through my fear. Um, you know, every, I'm in a huge transition period of my life. The book was kind of one of the instigators of that, but also just in my um, relationship, like I mentioned, my, um, my work and what I want to achieve and how I spend my time. What's most important to me is really trying to stay present with not only just how I feel, but in the moment, what the moment is offering me and how I'm experiencing that yeah. with a person or with my work or just with myself, yeah. you know, on my deck. And that seems to be the most um, um, satisfying place for me yeah. At, yeah. at the moment, you know, is being in that moment. Yeah. Um, so I think that would be the answer. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I think the, the more that we do exactly that, the more that we can get presence to what's going on in our lives, the more that we can connect to that moment and just truly be there as well as observe when we are there uh, and connect all of those things. It allows us to really enrich our lives, appreciate what it is that we are going through, even at the times that are challenging and tougher, yeah. uh, and to be able to listen to that, that deeper voice that's inside that's actually guiding us. Leah, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on The Meaningful Way and sharing all of your wisdom and, and all of your insights with us and our listeners today. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And for everybody out there listening, I want to really encourage you to check out The Fearless Path, A Radical Awakening to Emotional Healing and Inner Peace. Like I said, this is one of those things I used to be one of those skeptics, and now I am one of the proponents of. It is worth checking out. Break through any, any you know, uh, misconceptions that you may have about doing this work, because when you do, it will give you clarity around what matters most, what makes the biggest difference in your lives, and how to begin to connect to it. Until next time, continue to enjoy the journey. Thanks for tuning in to The Meaningful Way. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and please subscribe and follow along with all these great guests, their stories, and interviews. Also, it helps us a lot if you not only share some of your favorite episodes online, but also provide us feedback. Go into iTunes, Stitcher, or whatever your favorite podcast app happens to be and rate the show. Provide us some feedback and let us know how it is that we're doing. If you want to learn more about what we're up to, whether it be with the IPEC Coach Training School, the Live, Lead, Play Network, or even just what's evolving with The Meaningful Way, go on and head on over to LukeIorio.com. Mm -hmm.